Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Artisticon and this week's featured Artistalist artist, Artist Pat Pat Achilles. Oh, a little bit of feedback there. there. I'm going to back away from the mic. Anyways, I am here with Chris Kasakis, the founder of Artisticon, and our special guest today, Pat Achilles. Pat, welcome. Chris, good to see you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Sean. Thanks, Pat, for joining us again on this next feed. We just had Pat on Facebook Live. She's an editorial illustrator, cartoonist, and um, we're going to talk again. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Chris. It's nice to be here. Um, I grew up in Warminster, a suburb of Philadelphia, and um, my parents were very supportive of my artistic interests. My dad did illustration and cartooning on the side. He also had a um, computer programming job in northeast Philadelphia, but he was very happy to see me drawing at a young age. And he actually, he himself got a cartoon in the Saturday Evening Post when he was 80 years old. He told me uh, only 60 years of trying, and he finally got one in. (laughs) Hey, why <laughs> but not? He, had, he, he did cartoons for trade journals, for computer journals, because that was uh, something he knew a lot about. And um, so I, I grew up in Warminster, uh, took some art classes in high school, and then went to Moore College of Art in Philadelphia, uh, where I learned, along with the wonderful Beth Crush, uh, Bob Bird, terrific illustrator, and Andy Snyder, and sometimes Joe Crush, who's thrown into the was thrown into the mix too. He's a, a terrific illustrator, along with his wife Beth. And Joe is still around. He's 101 years old. So um, went to Moore, and Moore had a very good internship program. So that got me started off into some work uh, as soon as I got out of college. And I eventually got a job with Westminster Press, which was a publishing house for the Presbyterian Church. Um, eventually, being the art director for the children's Sunday school books, um, and that was a great job. And uh, soon after that, though, uh, I was married and we had some kids and started freelancing. And a few years after that, I realized I hadn't really gotten much uh, education about business. And there was a group in this area called the Women's Business Forum, a terrific group, started by some women entrepreneurs who wanted to grow their business and help mentor and educate other women in their businesses. So I joined that. It was a terrific group that taught me a lot about doing business. And in fact, that's what helped me about 10 years ago um, start with my friend Monica Hinterwaldner, the Bucks County Illustrators Society, which is a kind of an informal group of illustrators that get together once a month to kibitz, to share sketches and things we're working on tips and um help sort of mentor and educate each other too so that's where i am right now wonderful and um bucks county illustrators society of people are wondering that's a county in pennsylvania yes. outside of a suburb of philadelphia and mm-hmm. uh, a lot of, i think a lot of the artists are more philly based they, you know they're you know they're um around the philadelphia area but they work nationally in, mm-hmm. in, in national clients mm-hmm. uh, but it's a it's a great group of people so if you want to what is their website? We didn't mention it last time. Oh, okay. It's bcillustrators.org, like okay. Bucks County, bcillustrators.org. Okay. So if, if anybody's yeah. listening, um, well, hopefully a lot of people are listening, yeah. but whoever's listening, uh, if you're interested in joining the group, it, it's a great group. Yes. Uh, Sean and I have been to events, and uh, they've been to our Artisticon, and uh, check it out. But let's get back to Pat. And... Um, you were talking about the artists that influenced you. Um, can you get a little more into that? Like okay. telling us about their, their their technique or style that really attract, mm-hmm. what attracted mm-hmm. you to that and how you developed as an artist? Right. Well, I always wanted to do children's books and I have illustrated quite a few. And in college, um, one of my favorite artists was Carl Larson. I have one of his books here. Beautiful. Um, Swedish artist from around 1910 to 1920. Beautiful draftsman beautiful colors, and just a beautiful feel to illustrating his family, his wife, his children, landscapes, uh, interiors. And I was I was very influenced by him. In fact, I've done some, I don't have it here, I've done some greeting cards that I think are very influenced by him. Um, other people that I really like, of course, are the New Yorker cartoonists that I grew up with, like, um, like Misha Richter, 
uh, George Price, Lee Lorenz, Charles Saxon, the classic, terrific draftsmen uh, and, and humorists of The New Yorker of the 70s and 80s and 90s. Um, I also love Wally Tripp and Trina Shard Hyman. I know they work together on things. Their animal illustrations are delightful, whimsical. Um, Eric Shepard, who drew the Winnie the Pooh classic line drawings that everybody's familiar with. I love Eric Shepard. And uh, the, a current illustrator that I really enjoy is Annette Marnot. I have one of her books here. She's a children's book illustrator, but she's oh, yeah. done editorial work too, and beautiful digital stuff. Um, one of the illustrations that you're going to show of mine, I think, was kind of influenced by Annette Mornot. What I like um, to bring up is the idea of a draftsman. And this was something that was drilled into my head in art school, mm -hmm. is that, you know, you really have to hone your drawing skills. Um, what do you feel about that today? Do you think um, with technology and uh, the advent of technique, do you... Mm -hmm. Do you see that going by the wayside or do you feel, you know, it's something that should still be reinforced with foundation yeah. whether you're in yeah. art when I went, mm -hmm. When I went to Moore, um, we had life drawing. We had a lot of life drawing classes. And I got pretty good, I think, at drawing the figure because of that. And I know, I know it's still done. And Moore is a very good school. I think they emphasize some of those sort of classical traditional skills, which is good. I just, I realize there's so much to learn about technology now that schools can't leave that out. I understand that. All the things that you have to learn about Photoshop and 3D animation and things like that. So you have to spend time learning that. But to, to really hammer in the draftsman skills of drawing the figure, it always benefits your illustration if you can draw a good figure. Yeah. And, and also composition. I mean, it builds your composition skills. Yeah. Whether yeah. you're doing a plain air painting, you know, on the fly, or you know, planning out a landscape, I feel um, mm -hmm. whatever type of art, you know, I think, and it just it um, the more you draw, I think the stronger you get. It's like a muscle, you know. You yeah, you know, um, I I did for a while. Uh, I think it was Houghton Mifflin, one of the big textbook publishers y years ago. I had a friend who was an art director there, and she asked me to draw pencil compositions for their chapter headings. Like they'd have a double page spread for a history book and they used digital illustrators for the finished art, but those people couldn't really compose well, she said, that's what she told me. And so they wanted a pencil layout that then the photo illustrator could drop in, you know, and compose. And the, and the illustrations turned out terrific in the end, I saw them, uh, photo realistic. But yeah. you, you need those composition skills to make a good page. Absolutely. Um, let's bring up one of your pieces. Okay. So this is the um, New Hope Ghost Tour. Uh, right. Tell us a little bit about this. Right. Well, this this is from a children's book called Let's Visit New Hope. And if you've if you're ever in the area, New Hope is a, a wonderful. <laughs> Terrific little town full of excitement, lots of shops, lots of great people, entertainment, arts and culture. And um, the Historical Society of New Hope, which is a great group of people, too, very interested in preserving the history of the town, as well as the, the current features of it. They wanted a book that would um, show the virtues of, bring, of parents bringing their kids here to New Hope. It wasn't just for adults. So um, one of the uh, authors, Gail Goodman along with Roy Ziegler, contacted me because Gail had met me at when I was selling Christmas card, my own Christmas cards at a bazaar years ago. And she told me about this book. So I was on board with the book from the very beginning as they developed it. And I wanted to mention Gail Goodman, the author, told me when she was a girl, she had these books by M. Sasek. This is London. This is Paris. The, there's a whole series of these children's books. Mm-hmm. Miroslav Sasek, he was a, I think a Hungarian or Polish illustrator. And they are, they're really wonderful books. My kids have gotten me a bunch of them. <laughs> so <laughs> in, inside they are full of drawings of the, the architecture in these cities. And so Gail wanted Let's Visit New Hope to be kind of that kind of a book for New Hope. So 
this one illustration um, is depicting the ghost tours that go on every October in New Hope. And it's sort of a compilation of the buildings there. And if you see in the lower left corner, there's a little gentleman, um, Benjamin Parry. He's sort of the father of New Hope. And he sort of leads you through the book, showing you the different events and um, architecture and things in the book and the history. So he's sort of scaring the family there that's on the ghost tour. I use this illustration a lot when I talk to children children's groups because in each window I've put some little Halloween things there's a bat, uh, a mouse a Venus flytrap with a fly buzzing around it so uh, it's I tried to pack this one full of stuff and I also have this was the dummy book that I created for the entire book mm -hmm. and like this page, this was how that drawing started out okay. uh, sort of my cartoony style and it's, right. it's pretty close to the way it ended up. After I did this, I photocopied, made a small color comp, which is pretty close to what the finish was, too. And then I transferred that drawing to cold press illustration board, which is what I usually use, uh, drew it in Prisma pencil, and painted it in some acrylic wash and some opaque acrylic as well. Now, you, when you say Prisma, you mean Prisma color colored pencils? Yes, Prisma Pets. Yeah, right. Have you ever They're, used any other uh, brands like Derwent or any of that? Have you ever tried any different types? Uh, Derwent, is that like a watercolor pencil? I'm not it sure. Can be. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I have experiment in my sketchbooks and stuff, and I keep sketchbooks. I have used that, and they're, they're really fun to draw with, too. Um, I love the, I, I just love the waxy feel yeah, of yeah. Prisma Pencil Prisma color against, color. against a little bit of tooth on the cold press illustration board. It's a, a great drawing surface. Yeah, I went through a colored pencil phase in art school and I was trying all different types of brands, but Prisma Color, I still have a, a really good set still. I mean, I haven't used a you know, color pencil dedicated uh, for years, but you know, every once in a while I'll bring them out and I go, yeah, these are just, they're just a unique quality. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. a, like, there's nothing like Verithin or the Prismacolor on like tracing paper or well. vellum and it just glides across like it's on yes. ice. Oh, it's beautiful. Yes. So yes. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, great. Let's bring up number uh, three. You mean number two? Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm off. <laughs> And this is a theater poster, and tell us a little bit about this and the story behind the characters. Right. Um, my husband sings, and he loves classical music, and I love classical music and dance and theater. And so he sings for a local group, the Bucks County Gilbert and Sullivan Society. And if you don't know Gilbert and Sullivan, they were writers in the um, Victorian era, and I think of them as the Monty Python troupe yeah. of the Victorian times because they were very funny. They're They're very clever operettas that really still appeal to people today. So this one year they were doing two short operettas, Trial by Jury and Cox and Box. Cox and Box is not performed very often. And so I had to sort of combine the ideas of those two into this poster. Now Trial by Jury basically is uh, a courtroom scene and a bride appears and she's been jilted by her fiance and she's appealing to the judge to give her some settlement and the judge starts flirting with her because she's very pretty. And in the end, they end up engaged, the judge and the uh, <laughs> the bride. So that's why those two are in the illustration. In Cox and Box, it's it's a just a, a funny little story of two men who rent the same room. The landlord knows there's two men renting the same room, but they don't know because one works during the day and sleeps in the room at night. The other works at night and sleeps during in the room during the day. And one fateful day, one gentleman has the day off and they meet and there's a conflict. So those two gentlemen leaning out of either side of the bench are Cox and Box. The one on the left in the green coat is actually my husband because he was in the show. Right. You and have the actual, actual poster in here, don't you? Yes. Yeah. I, I, do, I design, I do everything. I design the poster too. So we just sort of dropped in the, t the type and all the information at the bottom. Yep. Yep. Wonderful. How many have you done for the group? I'd say eight or nine by now. The, the whole canon of Gilbert and Sullivan is only 14 plays, I think. 
Um, they only wrote 14 together, but um, I even had created the one for the sorcerer for this June and then it got canceled. So we're going to use it for next June. <laughs> Very nice. And that has that the quality of, um, our, was it Arnett? Annette Marnot. Arnett yeah. Marnot, yes. Yeah, which is a little retro feel. You're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and she's kind of, she, I, I'm pretty sure she's completely digital. And what's odd, it's come full circle. Now I'm doing realistic art because I hand painted that. That's that's sort of trying to look digital, you know. Right, right. Some right. some of the textures and the clean lines and everything that digital can give you, I I do try and emulate that in some of my um, paintings like this. Which is yeah. kind of well, funny. it's interesting how you know certain artists do employ the digital in such a way that they would with a traditional medium. Yeah. It's just another tool. I mean, and that's yeah. the I think that's your ultimate goal, you know, um, to somehow bridge the gap. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that takes years. Sometimes, it, you know, you click. I mean, from the artists we've all talked about that uh, or talked with rather, sorry, um, with their artwork that are, have gone completely digital, um, there's still a, a, a component, I think, that they will draw by hand mm -hmm. sketches and then maybe bring that in. So I think, you know, some strictly digital, some not. Um, right. But you had told us earlier in in the Facebook live session about an incident um, that you, I guess it was a, a problem and you found a solution. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, when you deal with nonprofits or charitable organizations, which I've done in the past, um, you're dealing with people that often don't have book publishing experience and that's fine. Their expertise is somewhere else, but you sometimes run into problems. So, um, a friend of mine, Phyllis, um, works with the Maasai Cultural Exchange Project, which is a wonderful charity that raises money to build wells for clean water in Kenya, in Maasai land, and to send children and women to school to pay their tuition. And uh, Phyllis had said to me she'd always wanted to create a children's book that would go in the libraries there in Kenya of a distinctly Maasai folktale. And so we decided to do this together with the support of the Maasai Cultural Exchange uh, Project. So the folktale is called The Lion, the Ostrich, and the Squirrel. And we framed the story of it by saying the grandmother of this Maasai family started to tell the story to the children. And that, that was the beginning of the story and the end of the story to bookend it. And um, that's what is on the cover. It's the grandmother telling the children uh, the story under the shade of an acacia tree with their um, traditional sort of mud and wattle created uh, house in the background. It's, it's very specific and very um, correct because Phyllis had some Maasai friends come and they, they wore their costumes. I was able to take photographs. I talked to them about I mean, there's even some little toys in the hands of the boys there that are authentic things that they play with over there. So it was a great project for that. Once I got the the cover done and in color, which you have to have a color cover for a children's book, you know, you have to draw attention. I had done sketches for the rest of the story and we had been talking about my payment and it became apparent that, you know, to do a 32 page book in full color was gonna cost a lot of money to pay me. So I said, I said, you know what, um, why don't we make it a coloring book? So I just sort of tightened up my pencil drawings and it's now a coloring book. It's been in print for probably seven or eight years and they sell a lot of them and it, that became a feature, not a bug, that this was a coloring book. Um, so that was, that was one way. And so my advice to, you, yeah, so my advice to people is to work to get a win-win with your clients. Yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, that was one <laughs> one example of where it really worked out well for everybody. Like I said earlier, you uh, you were ahead of your time because now the rage is all these coloring books yeah. for children and adults. Yeah. And that's great. <laughs> Let's bring up our third uh, piece, the um, Rubik's Cube. Office. Churn. Churn. Right. Yeah. Office churn. <laughs> Um, tell us about this. Yeah, this was a 
Peace Fort Lodging Magazine, which is a trade journal for the hotel industry. Every month um, I get, for about the last three years or so, every month I get an article to illustrate. And it's about some problem in the hotel industry that they're dealing with and solutions. They talk to experts. So this one talked about when hotels merge, of course, there's a lot of uh, relocation of people's positions, you know, uh, re re scheduling things, replacing people, and it's like churn. <laughs> and so when I got the summary of this article, I don't think I even got the whole article. When I got the summary from the editor, I thought I had two ideas for this because what it said in the article was the office manager often has to pull apart the pieces and put it all back together again when these mergers happen. So the first sketch that I sent was this one, sorry. Um, where there's an office manager up on a ladder and the classic ball of tangled twine with people trying to undo their pieces. So that was one idea. And then the second idea was pretty much what that one became. This is the sketch for the Rubik's Cube. Because the whole idea of the article talked about, you know, the I got images of moving desks and people churning around and everything. And I thought of that classic Rubik's cube. And this is where the New Yorker cartooning style kind of influenced my creation of the drawing, because those little people are just simple little people, but they're, they're processing, you know, information and talking to each other and uh, looking through files and all. So sort of a combination of those influences came to put this illustration together. And when, when working on this piece or others, uh, when you're doing your sketches, do you do a second round of like a full rendered comp or do they, end up, they know you well enough to go to a finish? Yeah, it? right. At the beginning, I, I, whenever I have a new client, I do that always for a full color sketch because you never know. Sometimes if it's for a company, because I do a lot of work for businesses, they may have company colors that they want, sure, you know, sure. want one, um, one family that's in a um, financial advisor family. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, a father, two children, a couple other employees. So it's a family business. I did an illustration of all of them and I put her, the daughter, in red. And she said, red is bad. Don't use red. You know, red means you're in the red. And mm -hmm. so uh, <laughs> I always have to draw them in greens and blues, oh, <laughs> always. So you have to put color in it first until you find out things like that. With Lodging Magazine, uh, I sometimes I can go right from a pencil sketch to the finish, but I always say to them, if there are tweaks needed, you know, let me know. And usually they're pretty happy with, with what I send them. Great. And you've been working for this uh, client for how long? Lodging for about three years, monthly. Yeah. So do you find that you pick up certain clients and have continuous work? Um, like how many um, uh, dedicated clients you have? Steady. Versus? Right. Right. And that, yeah, I, I have mm, probably eight or 10 clients that I do holiday cards for too. Um, like uh, there are financial advisors, the company that I just talked about. And so I've been doing theirs. They weren't our financial advisors when I started illustrating for them, <laughs> but they are now they're very good. And so, um, I do their, they, I do a new year's card for them because, they're, they're an account, they're a financial firm, so their year starts with, you know, January 1st. I do a Thanksgiving card for a sales company. They, they train car salesmen, I guess is what it is. They train car salesmen. I do a Thanksgiving card for them every year because they want to thank their clients. And they figure the card gets out before the Christmas card rush. It lands on the pile early, so they want to do a Thanksgiving card. And then there's four or five or six that I do holiday you know around christmas time and that's often uh flattering caricatures of the staff sometimes they want that sometimes it's a straight kind of a comedy card like a new yorker type gag and um for instance the thanksgiving card that i do the gentleman who's the head of that company has told me that they send them out to their clients and when they go then on their rounds and visit various offices and and automotive you know uh, car places, they see the card tacked up on bulletin boards because it applies to their business. People love that. When I do a specific comedy, you know, a comic gag cartoon that applies to their business. Gotcha. Um, back to art school. 
Um, what do you think is one thing that you feel is absolutely paramount uh, someone in art school or preparing for a professional career that they should know mm -hmm. now that you, you've had many years experience? In yeah, career? yeah. I think um, the need, I would advise them to join clubs, organizations like a graphic artist guild or a chamber of commerce. I'm a member of the local chamber here too. Um, that has a lot of different people coming together, not necessarily all artists, um, and to join art communities as well, because you need to sort of build your team. You need to find people who are like you, who could discuss things the way you need, things you need to hear. Um, you may need accounting advice, you may need insurance advice, and if you join these business organizations, you'll find people like that, and when you know them personally, you trust them, and I think they will do a good job for you too. It's not some, uh, you know, company that you find on the first page of Google. You know, it's it's a, a a flesh and blood person that will do a good job for you. So I I like to say, don't be afraid to join groups, organizations, and if you can't find one that's like in your niche, start your own. That's how we started the Bucks County Illustrator Society. Right. And when we started meeting, there were two or three of us <laughs> sometimes at the table, and now we have regularly 12, 15, 18 people illustrators coming it's a great group it's a terrific and, group and you've been zooming the past few meetings but yep you, we had to right yeah. right but we can still we can still yeah. screen share what we're working on exactly yeah and that's very uh fortuitous that you know we have this technology yeah. um so getting back to your work um as far as potential clients that might be listening art mm -hmm. buyers what is uh what is it something you feel that you offer unique quality or qualities? Um, I, I like to think that I'm a, a very good drafts person. So when they need something drawn, whether it's a product or a person or whatever, I think I can do the job well. Because I've worked with so many businesses too, I'm very attentive to their target audience. I try and draw to draw the attention of their target audience into the illustration. And I, of course, I'm always attentive to deadlines. I know things have to be done at a certain time, so I'm pretty. I have a pretty good reputation with that. That's great. Something I wanted to bring up because I noticed on your website because we're a scout family. My son's a mm -hmm. uh, bear and a cub scout. Mm -hmm. You did an illustration for Eagle Scouts, so and my nephew's an Eagle Scout. So I thought, can you talk about that a little bit? So yeah. Well, my son is an Eagle Scout as well, mm -hmm. and um, t a year or two before he made Eagle. A good friend of his did, and I did a funny little cartoon of an eagle and made, put it on a card and gave it to Kyle, you know, and everybody loved it. So I printed it up, and um, there's a there happens to be a, a Boy Scout store in Doylestown, yeah. and I showed it to them, and they said, we'll, we'll sell it. So we have a deal, and some of the money always goes to the Boy Scouts because they're a terrific organization. When my son made Eagle, I wanted to do a more standard, uh, serious one. So he modeled for me, and it's a uh, a picture of a Boy Scout on a on a hill with an eagle flying over, and he's holding an Amer American flag. And that one sells. So I have them both on my Etsy store, and they sell through my Etsy store and through the Doylestown BSA store. And I, I'm really happy to have a partnership with them. What's your Etsy uh, account name? Uh, I think it's just. Oh, it's it's the same as my website, a kid's portfolio. I'm gonna so go pull it up and we can show everybody. Please portfolio. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I just want to make sure no one was talking. I think we were all getting a little reverb. Um, oh. I'm sorry, Sean. Say that again. Oh, that wasn't me. That was you that time. Oh, was it? Back away from the mic. I'm backing away. Okay. Yeah. Um, me too. I wanna. <laughs> is there any um type of art tip a technique or anything you want to talk about that you you've stumbled upon um well you know what i i, I know you had that question uh in your list here but i wanted i did want to mention a few things that i've sure, been doing sure. like online that people might like the um there is a life drawing class that I believe runs every Wednesday evening through the Bucks County Classical Arts Center. And it's Bucks County Classical Arts Center Board. That's run by John Murdoch. And everybody gets a front row seat because they do it on Zoom, you know, so the camera on the, the model, and it, it's, uh, I've done that a few times and I really enjoy that. Um, 
there's a podcast called Art Curious Podcast. And they have unusual stories about artists that's really fun to listen to. I often listen to podcasts while I'm drawing. And the third thing, I, I love architecture, too. I'm learning more and more about architecture as, as my work progresses. And there's a very funny website called McMansionHell.com. And it is, it is written by, I think, I don't know if the woman is an art historian or an architecture major, but she, she dissects... 1970s and 80s mansions and says what's so awful about some of the, the draw the um, you know design of them and stuff and it's a very funny one mcmansionhell.com great i'm always looking for new podcasts i'll have to yeah. look some of them yeah out. art curious is very interesting yes wonderful wonderful well i think we pretty much covered quite a bit in this uh, i totally wanted to bring session. up that etsy, that etsy site and i can't find it it's, it's eluding me Achilles portfolio? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Come on, Etsy. Thank you, Carol. Uh, give me a title for one of your pieces that's on there. Oh, uh, I think Eagle Scout Congratulations card. It is on her website, too. That's where I saw it. Yeah, yeah. Eagle Scout Congratulations card, comma, Achilles, maybe, or something like that. Aha. Should, should bring it up. We found it. Hooray. All right. Exciting. <laughs> give, me a, give me one second to create a new interface so I can bring this up. Oh, thanks. That's great. While you're on, let, tell us a little bit about your studio. How long is that? It's very organized, unlike mine. Well, I'm not even sitting in my studio right now. <laughs> um, it's a good thing this wide-angle lens just goes this far. On either side of that, there's piles of stuff. Okay. But um, this, this room was a garage at one point before we moved into the house. And when we moved in... Then the previous owners had like paneled it in dark paneling and brown shag carpeting. It was, you know, so it was a playroom for a couple of years for our kids. And then we were able to renovate it. And there's a piano down there because my husband is musical. And so it's sort of our music and art room. And it works beautifully. I'm, I'm sitting in front of a big window here, which looks down on my drawing table. So it's been it's been a wonderful investment. And that, I think it's very important that you have your own space for artists. Uh, yeah. To retreat to yeah. Sean, you know, Sean helped me reorganize some of my studio because I, I just have a habit of piling things upon piling things, and then I get overwhelmed. I'm like, <sighs> okay, what the heck do I do with this? And it's like, mm -hmm. if you don't use it for five years, it's gone. Yeah. You know? so, and I collect toys, and I and I have a comic collection, so I have a little. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a hoarding thing, but it's it's a collector's thing. So I, I have start. a children's yeah, I have a children's book collection. And oh book yeah, so there that, and it's it's overflowing because there's so many good ones. Yeah, I have between my sons. I actually have like, I th we have a little crawl space, and I got to get them out of there. I have about ten file boxes of children's books through the year, because <laughs> when when I go into Barnes and Noble, it's like my wife will head towards her section. Dean and I just beeline to the, and he's like, you know, he loves the children, but I'm looking at him for the art. Right. I'm looking at it for, you know, inspiration. Yep. Yeah. It, 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 and it's, I think it's almost worse than my comic <laughs> addiction. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> so let's uh, bring up that website. Yeah. Yeah. Go All, ahead. Right. All right. Let's do it. And we are live. We are looking at the Eagle Scout on Hilltop Congratulations card. Yeah. That's, <laughs> cool. That's a great really card. Yeah, That's so cool. You know, I have a funny story. Through uh, college, I had to. One of my jobs I had was to do caricatures at theme parks. I think a lot oh. of us are. You know, it's a rough job, right? Because everybody <laughs> wants their nose big, but then they don't want their nose big. Right, right. right. <laughs> you can't. It's really you can't win. Like everybody thinks it's funny, except the person sitting in the chair who thought it was funny initially. <laughs> um, but anyways, so I, this uh, redhead sits down. And he's and he's drawing and I'm drawing him and I'm drawing him and I have a couple of really cool experiences you know because uh, it was a pretty big theme park I worked for and I worked for a couple of other ones as well um, a little smaller but still kind of popular uh, within at least certain age ranges and this guy sits down and he goes so you're an artist huh and I'm like well trying to be you know so and he's like ah oh. he's like I was drawn by a very famous artist I said no kidding he's like yeah you ever see that picture by Norman Rockwell with these kids and Boy Scouts, and they're in like profile, and the one Boy Scout's walking through. He's like, "Well, that was me." He's like, "I posed for that as a kid," and I, you know, and I thought, "Wow." So I worked at the Brandywine, and I, you know, I've, I've had some pretty cool run-ins, and I worked in New York, and I've had, you know, opportunity to meet some really cool people. 
But I was like, wow. So this dude was in an actual Norman Rockwell painting. At first, I said, I said no, you're lying. He's like, no, no, I even have a picture. So I'm assuming about, he was a, an older person. Yes, 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 yes. yes. It was, he was really young, what? but yeah, at the time he was, he was older. Yeah. Um, right, right. Oh. So, but he pulled out the picture of him as a kid, um, and he had the reference image, and it was really, really cool. And he was not he was not lying. And uh, I was like, okay. That's, that's, super, that's a great story. Yeah, it was super fun. But anyways, back to this one. You can look out <laughs> on Hilltop, because we're really here about Pat. I just thought that was a oh. fun anecdote, if you will. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, so this one here you can buy this card for four fifty on Etsy.com. You can look up Eagle Scout on Hilltop. Congratulations, <laughs> greeting card. This is mm -hmm. awesome. I'm gonna try to zoom in here a little bit so we can get a, a, a better view of this. Um, so yeah. I'll awesome. tell you, I've had I've had real success with Etsy. I would recommend it for things like yeah. this. Um, but of course, those cards are kind of a niche. It's good if you can hit a niche. I think on Etsy. Sure. Um, not too many people produce them, but um, Etsy calculates the postage and everything. So when when somebody orders one like that, I have my envelopes ready. I have everything ready. I just slip it in there, print off the postage sticker, and and drop it in the mailbox. So it's it's been pretty good for me, Etsy. You mind if you, we uh, peruse um, your site here while you're talking a little bit, and we can if you see something that you would like to talk about, would, would you mind doing that for a couple minutes? I mean. Do you yeah. also put it post anything on Pinterest or anything like that? Or I don't Oops. understand it, Chris. I don't understand how you how you manage it. It's just yeah. like uh, it, it's good for inspiration, you know. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. Somebody just bought those that top left card there. The um. These are awesome. Thank, thank you for sending business my way, which I did when when I was in the women's business forum. I you know, uh, other business people would buy them too. It's nice to keep in touch with your referrals and stuff. So I just sold some of them the other day. So I just keep them stocked and um, I, oh, I great. promote them once in a while on social media, but Etsy itself is a good place to, they sort of promote things for you, you know, because you tag everything. So somebody who's looking for a thank you note card would eventually come to my page on Etsy. I'm gonna grab one more. All these, I love the piano panda. That's super. Cool. Yeah. I gotta get. I gotta get away from the mic here. Let me push this back a little bit. Okay. Um, wow, you got some coloring pages. Eagle Scout yeah. salute. Oh, hippo book lover note card. That's cool. <laughs> Let's check that one out. Well, I do a lot of animals. <laughs> Often I do them. Yeah, for somebody who devours books. So that would be a little note card you'd put along with a gift of a book. Now, do you do you do a lot of print on demand or does this like you have the actual stuff? I have them. Yeah. Ha with Etsy, you have to yeah. have the inventory in your house. So I don't print a lot of them, but okay. the local Doylestown printer that I use is, is fantastic. Cortinio creative. I'll give them a little plug. And so, uh, you know, when I'm running low on Eagle Scout cards, I send them an email, they print up another batch of them for me. So I always have the inventory here, but, um, that way I can control the quality of the printing and everything. There's other sites like Zazzle that produce the item for you, and you don't know exactly how it's going to turn out. So, and do you? Um, and although most of these are hand done, are you archiving everything digitally? You have yes, yes, backed up. Yeah, of course, yes. Great. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. I like that one. That's cool. There's a lot of great stuff on here. This is uh, thanks. Pretty fantastic. <laughs> really, thanks for humoring me and let me uh, put this up. Excellent. Just transition so people can see where to find you. Oh, thank you. Give me one second. <laughs> That's Achilles Portfolio on yeah. Etsy. Um, and she has a bunch of five-star ratings. So she delivers yeah. on time, and the products must be really, really good. <laughs> I'm going to go sell everybody a car now. Which yeah. <laughs> anyways, um, great. So back to you guys. I'll transition on over. Thanks so much. Do you have any lasting words of wisdom or anything you'd like to impart or talk about? Wow. Oh. Um, hmm. well, where do you where do you see the rest of your career going? What do you hope to anything on the bucket list that you haven't done? Uh, I would love to try a New Yorker cover. Yeah. <laughs> Go, <doing it. laughs> yeah. I, don't, I I forget if we talked about that much here or was it the previous? It was, it, it, I think we weren't even on on film. Or I've, I've had several cartoons. Pro 
purchased and published by the New Yorker. There's yeah. one they're holding that hasn't been published yet, pr printed yet. But, um, you know, I just, it's just always been the premier periodical for yeah. humor and, and urbane wittiness and stuff. So, uh, and I do love their covers. Um, the oh, covers yeah. are beautiful. So that's, yeah, that's, that's, on, that's still on my bucket list. Um, it was a big, I felt like my dad was pulling strings for me when I finally got one in, you know, <laughs> into the magazine. Yeah. And that was a big thrill. And I have it, I have it framed in my kitchen, you know, the, the uh, cartoon. So yeah. that was a big, big deal. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Pat. It was very enjoyable. Um, please, those who are listening, uh, check out her website. Check out this. This will be an archived video if you missed anything. Um, and we really appreciate her taking her time out of her schedule. Um, check out the Bucks County Illustrator Society. And that website, again, was bcillustrators.org and you guys you guys have been fantastic thank you so much for this oh, thank, this you. Was for, uh, thank you <laughs> and uh, other people from bucks county start submitting we have one other you guys got to come on <laughs> yeah. I'll know, so take them. advantage yeah. <laughs> um that's yeah. store let's get back to that because that's a great source of revenue we created this with the idea of one creating a clearinghouse or an informational list of working artists so art directors can find them and hire them not necessarily original in that sense but by doing these sort of things these live broadcasts it allows us to offer opportunities for artists to put a face to the name to the work show off a little bit about the personality talk a little bit more and hopefully that will then impart some sort of fingers crossed some sort of in love moment where the art director says, I have to hire that person. But if not, we still have other sources of revenue like the Etsy store and huge, ooh, another, another, some more feedback. Um, but we have, so her Etsy store, Achilles portfolio, right? Go over there, buy a card. You know, um, at this point in time, we're all sort of in the same situation. So if you do have some discretionary income, you're looking for a card for a birthday or for an Eagle scout or somebody that loves books, check mm -hmm. out her Etsy site, Achilles portfolio. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much and uh, keep busy. <laughs> Everybody, thank you for joining us for the featured artist of the week. This is Sean, Chris, and Pat Achilles saying goodbye. Thanks again. Thank you.